Jim Hong, Director of Wireless Broadband Solutions at Aviat Networks. Today I'm going to talk about WTM4000. Here I have a WTM4000 radio. And we're going to cover the interface ports on this platform. On the bottom of the radio, I've already removed all of the interface covers so we can talk about them. This first one here is our DC power input. This is where we normally would power the radio. Through DC power, we can accept a voltage range of 24 to 48 volts. The next interface on the radio is our one gigabit copper interface port. And this first one is also used for PoE. So in case you wanted to power the radio over uh, gigabit ethernet, we can do that through this interface port and put our data payload through here. The next port is another copper gigabit interface port, but this is, has no PoE, so it's for data only. The last two ports on the radio are SFP cages. Here we can plug in 10 gig SFPs and communicate to the radio at 10 gigabits. Tying all of these interface ports together inside is a 50 gigabit non-blocking carrier grade ethernet switch. So it gives us a lot of flexibility in how we can interface with the radio and the behavior of the radio. We can do both in-band or out-of-band management. So for example, we can put our payload on the 10 gig SFP ports and we can have our management interface on our copper gigabit ports for out-of-band management. On the other side of the radio, we've got several more ports available here, and we'll go through the configuration of these. The first one at the bottom here is I've got a USB interface, and this is used for a few features. One, it's used to back up the configuration of the radio. So once you've logged in, got everything programmed the way you want, you can plug in a USB flash drive and do a backup of the config. By having that, it makes it easy in the future. If you need to swap out the radio, you put your spare end plug in your flash drive, you can do a quick restore, and now your system is back up and running again. Second use for the USB port is you can plug in a Wi-Fi dongle, and now you can access the radio through your smartphone or your laptop through Wi-Fi. Uh, it saves you from having to plug in with a physical Ethernet cable, especially for the technician up on the tower doing the antenna installation and alignment. He can open up his smartphone, Wi-Fi into the radio, and get a signal strength reading. And then lastly, underneath the same cover port, there are two test probe ports, and this is used again for the technician up on the tower, the traditional way of plugging in a digital voltmeter and doing the antenna line by reading out the voltage for the signal strength. Up here, these are our two interconnect ports, and these are used uh, when we're going to use the radio either in a MIMO configuration or we're going to do X pickup on the tower. This allows us to tie together multiple WTM radios up on the tower. On the opposite side of the radio, we've got our RF interface port. And this is our direct attach waveguide port to the back of the dish. So normally this radio unit is mounted directly to the back of the antenna through this interface port here. Secondarily, if you've got an existing antenna that doesn't have the same physical interface, we can use our remote mount kit and through a piece of flexible waveguide attached to an existing antenna. So that's a quick look at WTM4000. For more information, you can visit our website at aviatnetworks.com, or if you'd like to order online and receive uh, next day shipping, you can do that through our online store at aviatcloud.com.